Well, it's the most popular social media platform out there. Uh, we've, um, you would probably have known that anyway, given the, the disclosure of the companies. We've run our own proprietary survey just in the U.S. market. And, uh, and that, that showed that uh, far and away, it's the most widely used and pretty much across all demo groups. Um, Insta if you throw in Instagram, uh, uh, that's the most popular platform amongst uh, uh, younger users. Facebook does skew older, but uh, across um, Facebook and its family. Uh, so I, I think they are highly relevant. Whether they'll change in the future, that's possible. The risk coming from uh, TikTok, and I think TikTok most potentially competes with Instagram. That's why you've seen a lot of video, short form video, uh, um, uh, improvisation, improvement, product improvement in Instagram over the last couple of years. Hey, Mark, when you take a look at what's happening with Facebook, especially just over the last couple of weeks, so we had the testimony from Francis Haugen today. We had the outage yesterday. Of course, there's been these ongoing calls to break up Facebook, that Facebook is just simply too big, the, uh, that it's a monopoly. Are we at an inflection point, do you think, when it comes to Facebook? I guess, how significant do you think the last couple of weeks have been when it comes to the future of the company? This seems like an LR company, a uh, lightning rod uh, company, in part because it's so broad. Now, I think there's real evidence that it's mon not a monopoly or else you wouldn't have had the rise of, uh, of Facebook and you wouldn't have had the rise of Snap over the years and you wouldn't have had a surge in people able to find other ways to communicate yesterday during an outage. So I think we've had a couple of real clear data points that this, is, that this isn't a monopoly. The major acquisitions the company had were reviewed, but whether they should be reviewed again, you know, that's the that's the FTC's call. And then, um, uh, but th this 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 is a company that's uh, this is the third time in which this um, scandal in 2018, and then last year there was a, a brand advertising um, uh, debate as to where some of the ads were placed, what kind of content they were placed uh, next to. That's a wake of some of the controversies. The, the 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 uh civil unrest we had in this country uh last year so you know there's there's uh, facebook is no stranger to these kind of uh controversies i think some of it's just endemic or just comes with a platform where there's so many voices there's so much content that's uploaded you know if you want to find something that uh, that's controversial you can find it on the on the site i think the vast majority of people don't look uh for controversial uh information content on Facebook. They just look to kind of keep in touch with their friends and family. But there are those who will use the size and the scale of the platform for exploitative uh, reasons. And that's what Facebook probably needs to shut down much more aggressively than they have in the past. Oh. That all said, it's a very difficult thing to do. Mark, are the, is Facebook looking for a fight? Because they put out a statement, the director of policy communications, and here's part of it, quote, it's been 25 years since the rules uh, for the internet have been updated. And instead of expecting the industry to make societal decisions that belong to legislatures, it is time for Congress to act. What is, what is what Facebook is gain Facebook by saying, gain. bring it on? Well, they'd like to get out of the content moderation business. And look, if you're moderating content, you're not going to be able to satisfy. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be unhappy with your decisions. You know, take the presidential tweet from a year ago that there's looting, there's shooting. I mean, you could that could be interpreted politically. There's free speech uh, interpretation of that, too. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to dive into that particular issue. It's just that I, I'm not sure. I, it, I think in a way, Facebook is saying, if you really are upset by the content that's on our site, come up with a, come up with a consensus political opinion about how you want that moderated. Because I think Facebook probably realizes, and most of us do, that our, you know, our Congress probably couldn't do it. I mean, um, there's some things that obviously should not be on the site related to child pornography, clear calls to violence, et cetera. But there's just a lot of gray area when it comes to content and what's so, what somebody, one person's political slogan and political advertisement is considered offensive by somebody else. And there's a lot of gray areas there. And I think trying to draw hard and fast content moderation rules would be almost impossible for most people to do. The, 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 the responsibility and the burden falls on Facebook and Facebook's trying to shove some of it back to legislatures. I just don't think that today's, uh, today's Congress or and most Congresses would be able to really handle that. Mark, we had a, a, many uh, interesting exchanges, not only today, but also going back last week when the Facebook executive was testifying in front of a group of senators. With Senator Blumenthal last week, he compared Facebook to the tobacco industry, and he was basically saying that Facebook is harming children similar to the way that the tobacco industry did them when they went after teens and children for their product that they know was harmful. I'm curious, just from your perspective, from an analyst perspective, what do you make of that comparison? 
I, I don't buy it. Um, if you what, what came when started a lot of this debate was the um, was the disclosure of some of this internal research. Well, now that we've all had a chance to really go through it, I think it's a lot more nuanced than what has been largely presented. That same survey that found that teen girls, there was a percentage of them, it was 3% in the survey, found that uh, Instagram made them feel much worse. That same survey found that 8% found that uh, made that Instagram made them feel much better. And if you look at the skew, uh, I think there's a lot more uh, teenage girls who get benefit out of using uh, Instagram than are harmed by it. And there's a lot of definitional issues involved here. I, I understand it's really tricky. I'm a parent. I've got three teenagers at home, uh, and I, you know, I worry about where they are and how much time they're spending and the addiction that's associated with Instagram and other sites as well and traditional media as well. So, um, I, I do think it's different. I think it's much more nuanced than big, uh, big, big tobacco was. And then, since you asked me also about as a financial analyst, what I'm going to look at at the end of the day is: does this lead the user growth to decelerate or, or reverse? Does this lead to a decline in engagement? Does this lead advertisers to start abandoning the platform? I haven't seen one of those three things happen yet, but that's what financial analysts would focus on. I think the core value proposition of Facebook is still super strong to consumers and to advertisers. That's why I think this is still a very good asset. And on these kind of dislocations in the stock price, this is one where investors should be buying this kind of weakness. The, the, the other issue, and I was talking about this with the other guest, is if you have one of those um, uh, cookie uh, apps that prevents them from tracking you, when you get the log of who's tracking you, it's Facebook, 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 Instagram, 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 even if you're not using the app. So isn't that where they're making their money and that it's kind of like pay it note to attention to the man behind the curtain because we're all paying attention to these regulatory issues, but they're making their money, they're tracking us. That's where the cash is. Well, so that's that's what's behind the Apple privacy changes. And um, I think Facebook has had more information on its users than most media companies do because uh, Facebook's cookies and Facebook's tracking tools have been on apps that are used, uh, um, you know, that are used away from Facebook. Advertisers and marketers have really um, uh, benefited from that because they've had better targeting using uh, Facebook than they've been able to use with other platforms. I think these privacy changes that Apple is implementing, I think they're going to level the playing field. Now, Facebook still gives you more frequency and more reach than just about any other platform. They still have an enormous amount of first party data, so they don't need the extra tracking to get uh, a good audience in front of advertisers. Uh, and a, and a, you know, and a, uh, the, with the right targeted audience and good traffic, good tracking for advertisers. But I think the privacy changes have are going to have an impact. They're going to make the at the margin. They're going to make uh, Facebook's uh, ad platform a little less attractive versus peers than it was in the past.